everybody, this is Hornlet here, and welcome back for more Let's Clips The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In the last episode, we finished off City in the Sky, and in this episode, we're going to be getting a couple more 100% things before heading off to uh, the next dungeon, which is Palace of Twilight. Uh, so, right off the bat, you might be wondering, why am I here? Uh, I've beaten the dungeon, I should be back at the beginning of the dungeon, right? Well, uh, not actually, because uh, I, I used the save prompt after beating the dungeon to make the save file. And uh, as I was mentioning earlier, when you do the Argorok cutscene skip, it permanently sets the save location to in front of that chest. Uh, and so right there, that's proof that I wasn't lying. I was totally telling you the truth. So yeah, right? That's just proof right there. But yeah, as a result, I just have to walk back to the beginning of the dungeon, so I'm gonna cut this out. Alright, so now that we're back at the beginning of the dungeon, we just need to claw shot into this cannon and leave. But before I do that, I actually want to equip Iron Boots. And the reason for that is right after this cutscene ends, I'm going to be falling in midair. And if I do a midair jump attack, uh, I can actually save a little bit of time. Because uh, right here, as you can see, I'll land on the bridge right there. Uh, if I weren't, uh, if I hadn't have done the jump attack, or if I didn't have iron boots on, uh, I actually would have landed in the water, and I would have had to swim out and then come over here, so it's, uh, it just saves a tiny little bit of time there. But now that I've done that, I just want to head over here to, uh, this, uh, whatever this is, the grass right here, and I want to howl because I want to start Plum's minigame, because I haven't done this, right? Uh, yeah, something like that, so let's try and, uh, let's try and do this. Ah, it's too hard. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, so basically, as you may have figured, I'm doing a glitch right now. Uh, so this glitch is called Isa 1 Skip, and if you remember a number of episodes ago, I went into Isa's uh, shop, I went and shot uh, the bomb arrows to clear the path a little bit, and then I went into the boat, and then I save and quit. Uh, it seems completely pointless, and at the time it kind of was, like it, I wasn't doing anything with it, but uh, what that save warp did is it actually changed the uh, the map state of the Zora's River area. And so as a result, uh, what I'm about to do next is actually going to save a bunch of time and skip having to do the entire uh, boating sequence with Isa to open up the, her minigame. Uh, so after that, um, uh, yeah, after you bonk and stop that, you want to... Uh, say no and then transform into human and then you actually want to come over here into the water and do literally the easiest glitch in the game i'm not even kidding you this is i don't even know what it's called a, a claw shot clip underwater i don't even know i'll put the title up there uh literally what you have to do is get into water lock on hold out the uh the claw shot and then move into a slope there and you will clip right through the wall it is extraordinarily easy uh and then we just want to swim out here and then void out. And this is important because the last entrance that we had to this area was, or like, the entrance we, the way we came into this area was through this cutscene right here. This is a separate entrance altogether, because uh, like most entrances would be like entering from another room or warping, but this is also another entrance uh, coming from the minigame. And whenever you come from the minigame, Plum asks you if you want to go again. This time I'm going to say yes, because the difference is I'm human now, whereas before I was wolf. And so by doing this, it'll start Plum's minigame again, but you'll notice that there's nothing on the Cargrox feet. And so if I crash again, something weird will happen, I'll randomly void out. And then when it reloads, you'll notice I'm in uh, the ether. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so right there, uh, I'm at this weird place at the end of Zora's River. And then what I want to do from here is uh, actually equip Zora's armor. And then I want to uh, do a jump attack into the water here. Uh, swim down a little bit because the current will be pushing us backwards if we don't. Uh, and then we want to just swim forwards. And then I mentioned that Zora's River's state has changed back to or to something different. Well, it changed so that there's a loading zone here now. And this loading zone leads us to the entrance to Lake Hylia right here. And I'm in the boat now. <laughs> so suddenly I just transported to the end inside a canoe and now I have a Zora in front of me. <laughs> so yeah, with that we were able to completely skip the first uh, encounter with Isa. And, yeah, we get to skip that whole annoying sequence. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's really nice. There is a slightly faster way of doing it that actually requires uh, going out of bounds uh, the, on the first card rock flight, but it's pretty precise, and I'm not exactly confident in doing it. I've never actually pulled it off before. Uh, but the way that I did it is it works just fine. It's just a little bit slower. But anyways, with that, we get our third bomb bag, which is the final bomb bag. 
and uh, after that, I believe that's everything that we have to do here. Uh, so let's head off to uh, South Farron Woods because there are a couple things that we want to get there. Uh, because now that we have uh, finished the uh, the sequence, the, the 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 dungeon that we just did, uh, City in the Sky, uh, or actually I think technically it was Temple of Time. Uh, we have the Dominion Rod, and now that we've actually uh, restored power to the Dominion Rod, we're able to go over into here and get a few more things. Uh, or two more things in particular, but, uh, yeah, we just, we get a few things while we're here just because it saves a little bit of time to do that. So right off the bat here, I'm going to go behind Koro and transform. I guess he really is dense if he doesn't realize that I'm transforming right behind him. Uh, but then we can just buy an oil bottle from him. That leaves us with 200 rupees and an extra bottle. And I think that's our fourth bottle. Uh, let me check right there. Yes, that is our fourth bottle. Fourth and final bottle. Uh, then I just want to equip a couple things here, and we want to blow this uh, thing up. Uh, you can blow them up with uh, the ball and chain. It's really nice. Saves bombs and everything. I probably mentioned that already. I can't remember. Uh, but then we just want to grab this, and we uh, we can completely leave that little shining thing there. That's uh, what you would do with the uh, the sky the sky book that you got from the Hidden Village. But yeah, we don't need to do that because we've already skipped that whole quest thing. So yeah, that's completely pointless. Uh, but we do want to bring the Owl Statue over into that conspicuous little <laughs> hole in the ground. Then we want to come up here and we have a nice little uh, Minda Jump sequence that we can do right here. And that'll bring us up here. And that uh, brings us to the Purple Fog area, an entrance that we uh, don't normally have access to. And we have this chest right here, which we can open it up and get ourselves a heart piece, which actually that's another heart container. We are at, what is that, 18. Wow, we're actually getting really close to the end there. Uh, we only have five more heart pieces, actually, because uh, we still have one more dungeon that has a heart container at the end. Uh, but anyways, now that we're done that, we can come over, do a, bit, a few more uh, minute jumps, and then we can uh, go and get this Poe right here. And with that, we are done with all of the 100% stuff that we needed to get, so we're off to the next dungeon, which is Palace of Twilight. So, uh, we need to warp to the Mirror Chamber to do that. Alright, so now that we're in the Mirror Chamber, uh, we can just run up to uh, this area. We didn't actually... Er, oh no, I did, I did raise the mirror. Uh, I didn't actually have to raise the mirror. Had I just left the mirror after I finished... Uh, the fourth dungeon, Arbiter's Grounds. Uh, I actually would have just been been able to run forward, and the loading zone would have been there for this cutscene, anyways. Uh, so yeah, you don't actually have to raise the mirror, but yeah, as I mentioned back when I did it, it saves time to do it uh, in 100 percent, just because of how many times you have to warp after that. Uh, but anyways, now that that's done, we can enter the uh, whatever this dungeon is, Palace of Twilight. <laughs> Said it a couple times earlier. Oh, I forgot. But anyways. Uh, so yeah, now we can come into this dungeon, and this is probably probably my least favorite dungeon in this game. Uh, it's just, my biggest complaint with it is that the color scheme is just so bland. It's like very, like, ugly shades of like blue and brown, and there's like, you have like the, the blue that was right there, like the teal color that, uh, came from the, uh, like, that comes from, like, the veins in the wall in the door, if you can call those veins, but, uh, that's, like, that's a good color, but the rest of it's, like, really just murky colors, and it looks kind of gross, and I don't really like it. And not only that, but it's also just kind of annoying. <laughs> There's just a lot of annoying stuff to do in this dungeon. Uh, but anyways, so right there we just killed the, our first Zant head. We have a lot of those to kill in this dungeon. And doing that, we'll spawn this chest, which has a small key in it. Uh, the first half of the dungeon, we kind of have to go through uh, a couple wings of the dungeon, and we have to uh, get a small key in each room to get to the end of it. Then we have to bring back an item from each wing of the dungeon. Uh, and yeah, it just, it gets kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, actually, right here I want to transform. Uh, the reason I want to transform right now is because if I were to let this, uh, uh, whatever this is, the Black Fog, uh, transform me, there would actually be an extra Midna text, and I want to avoid that. So by manually transforming, you can avoid that. Which, it just saves a tiny little bit of time. Uh, but anyways, after killing that Zan head, we get a couple, uh, couple chests to spawn, and then we can go over here and get the, uh, this chest right here, which has another small key in it, so we're done with this room. 
Now, before I head into the next room, I want to make sure, yes, I am at full health. That is very important, because uh, before I went to City in the Sky, if you remember, I got the uh, seventh hidden skill, which is the Great Spin. That is going to be very, very useful for uh, this little mini-boss fight coming up right here. So uh, at the end of each wing, you're going to have to fight uh, the same mini-boss twice. Uh, it's a Phantom Zant, which it's like a relatively easy boss, but it... it the Phantom Zant teleports around a lot, and it can be really annoying. Uh, and the Phantom Zant fight works kind of the s same way as a bunch of other fights, where if you do a combo finisher on it, then it'll uh, then he'll teleport away right away, and that phase will be done. But if you don't do that, you can uh, it, it, the fight goes a lot easier. But if you have the Great Spin, it actually goes extremely quickly. So what you have to do right here, just do one spin attack, and then three Great Spins already dead. <laughs> it's so quick and so nice. I just, I love how fast this fight is. <laughs> and it's just so much easier than just having to do it normally. Because if, uh, if Phantom Zant starts to teleport around, eventually uh, Phantom Zant might get like an attack off, which summons a bunch of enemies. And it's really annoying, especially if you get the, uh, like the the Twilight Baba spawn, like, that's really annoying. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's really, really nice that you can just one-cycle the, uh, the fight like that. Uh, but now that we're done that, we have to transport these Sauls all the way back to the beginning. These Sauls are just, like, little balls of light. I'm not actually sure what they're technically supposed to be. I guess they're, like, little orbs of energy or something, or maybe they're just orbs of light. I mean, I guess that's kind of what they are. Uh, given the name Saul, but yeah, that's, uh, we just have to bring it back. <laughs> I think the game has some explanation for it, but I can't remember what they are. Uh, now we have this room. This room's actually one of the more annoying ones, because we have a bit of a weird throw we have to do right there, and by doing that throw, it throws it into the, uh, the little pedestal thing there, and then we can come up right away. We don't have to climb the stairs at all, and it's just a really fast way of getting up here. Uh, but the throw is a li little bit precise. It's not too bad. Right there, I just did a little L slide. Have I explained L sliding? I can't remember. Uh, I don't think so. If Actually, I probably... Oh, no, I did, because I, I had to explain the one glitch. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, just doing a little L slide there. It just saves a few uh, few frames. Uh, but anyways, now uh, we want to come over and into here, because we have a heart piece in here. Uh, we have two heart pieces in this dungeon, just like every other dungeon. And here's the first. And then after this, we're just going to be heading on our way out. And this, I guess I should bring up, this area of the game was easily the most terrifying thing for me as a kid. Because that hand, oh man, that hand was just, it, it creeped me out so much. Uh, this is bad, actually. <laughs> I was not paying attention very well. Uh, this is bad. Um, let me, uh... So, with this hand following you, if you attack it a few times, it will actually, uh, you'll sort of stun it and it won't be able to follow you anymore for a few seconds. So that's a nice way if what just happens happened, or happened happens, then uh, you can, uh, do that to make sure the, 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 whatever it's called, the wall master doesn't grab the, the saw. But yeah, anyways, this part of the game is so, like... It was terrifying to me. The, the way, like, the, the soundtrack plays into it with, like, the, the pounding strings as the, as the hand gets closer, it just, it was so scary for me as a kid. It took me a long time to get through this section just because I was terrified of it. Uh, anyways, uh, I just want to come this way and <clears throat> uh, drop that first, drop the first saw into one of those pedestals there. And then right here, we can do one of the easiest LJAs in the game. This is a good place to practice LJAs if you uh, if you need to practice them, uh, because it's a really simple place to do it. And yeah, it's just a really easy LJA there. Uh, but by doing that, we can skip the moving platform and we can head into uh, the second wing of the dungeon. And this wing, casually, is more annoying, but actually in the speedrun, it's not so bad. Uh, this first room is actually not great, but uh, the second room ends... Uh, the way back is actually a lot better. Uh, so at first we just want to get onto this platform. I want to wait a little bit so that I can, uh, so that these moving platforms will be in a better position, uh, so that I can get across all of them really, really quickly, and then get up here before this guy disappears, and then I messed up because, uh, I kept hanging off the wall. Fortunately, I got a good spawn. Yeah, this, uh, this Phantom Zant head can spawn in one of, I think, five or six different locations, and 
you kind of have to change what you do depending on where it spawns. Uh, but yeah, anywhere on the back is a decent spawn. Uh, but then once we kill that, we can just uh, grab the small key and head into this room. Now in this room, there are three uh, shadow beasts that we want to fight. And uh, in order to kind of make them all congregate right around me, I'm actually going to throw this boomerang and then roll to the left here. Uh, the boomerang uh, will sort of hit the shadow beasts to make them, uh, like, to, to sort of reset their uh, aggro, I guess, uh, so that they won't be trying to attack anything anymore. And then, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> My brain completely forgot. Uh, they aren't going to... Oh yeah, and then uh, going going to the left basically just kind of makes them miss you so that they don't like run right into you again, and then they kind of all congregate in one location. I didn't explain that very well, I know, but it was... Uh, it's Yeah, throwing that boomerang just basically resets their aggro. And, uh, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to go for the Spider-Man there. Uh, it's possible to, like, not even, uh, use, like, the first-person mode and just claw shot onto the wall there with, uh, just by moving it and pressing the claw shot button, but it's pretty precise. I've only gotten it, like, once. And then right here, you can actually stand in this corner and then do a, a, a claw shot onto this target right here. Uh, and that just saves having to go in, uh down and claw shot back up. Uh, now right here, I uh, the next room is another Phantom Zant fight, so I want to be at as much health as I can be, so let me just fill up my health. I know there's one right here, yeah. Uh, I do need one more heart, though. Does this have a heart in it? It does. Perfect. Alright, so now we're at full health, and we have our, uh, our great spin, and let's go right into this fight. If you don't have the Great Spin, uh, you do have to do a bit of a different strat where you have to uh, do a stab and then uh, two spin attacks and then wait, don't, uh, don't like attack uh, Phantom Zant again, and then wait for him to teleport once and then uh, do some do two more spin or do another stab and then two more spin attacks and then repeat it once more with three spin attacks and it'll and he'll die just the same uh, and it doesn't uh, he won't spawn any enemies. Oh, uh, but yeah, it just, it makes it a lot easier to use the great spins, so I'm just gonna do it that way. Doing quick spins can be a little bit risky, so doing that stra strategy is like, it, it's a little bit risky, but yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, uh, but yeah, now that we've done that, we are <clears throat> done with the second Phantom Zant fight, so now let's just go and grab this Saul and be on our way. Uh, also, normally this stuff will uh, trans teleport you, or transform you just like this, but uh... If you go on, like, the very edge and keep rolling through it, it doesn't teleport you, or teleport, it doesn't transform you just because I guess the collision wasn't very good on those or something. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little time saver you can do to just roll, like, inside the edge there. You don't have to go all the way around. And then we can grab this saw here. Pick, uh, oh, I didn't realize I already had it. <laughs> And then right here, I just want to use the sword to drop it a little bit early, and then I can roll all the way over here, and then I can be up on the top step by the time the stairs raise. And then I can just claw shot this and be right on my way into the next room. Now, this next room, oh man, casually, this was my least favorite room in, like, the game, pretty much, because it was so hard to get through. Uh, I don't know why I didn't realize you could throw the saw, I guess. Uh, because this is actually the easiest room in this dungeon at this point. Uh, basically what you want to do is just throw once you're here, uh, once you're on the little square on the ground, and then this will raise you up. <laughs> and then you can just walk all the way up here, and you're basically done the room. That's how easy it is. <laughs> and you can just claw shot the saw from right there and be on your way. Yeah, it's, it's a really simple room. Uh, casually, it was just, it was the hardest thing for me because I was like, placing the saw first and then trying to find where to go. Uh, but yeah, it was so bad casually, but uh, it's it's really nice in the speedrun. Uh, but now that we're in this room, we have one more heart piece we need to get in this room. Uh, so let me just stun the wall master there so that I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I need to get onto this moving platform because it's going to bring me over to this alcove in the wall, uh, which will have a chest in it, which will have the aforementioned heart piece. Uh, I don't want to drop the saw there. Uh, and the reason for that is because after that, I'm going to uh, jump off of here uh, and then do a mid-air jump attack to make sure I can get onto that platform. And then I can actually just claw shot the saw from here, uh, provided I don't have something in my way. Uh, and then I grab this, and then I can just ride it to the, ride this platform to the end of the room. So yeah, this room is not too bad either. 
It's pretty nice. Uh, but with that, we have all of the dungeon heart pieces, so we just have three more heart pieces uh, to go in the game, uh, which I do believe means that I didn't miss any, uh, which would which is good. Uh, and yeah, with that, we are uh, done with the first half of the dungeon, basically. I just need to bring this all to uh, the pedestal. Now, right here, I'm actually going to try... Okay, I missed. Uh, basically, right uh, there is one frame where you can do an action right before that cutscene with the the shadow, whatever this thing is, the resident, uh, there is one frame where you can do something and you can either throw the soul or drop it. And what that lets you do is it lets you roll over to this uh, uh, and it just lets you get over a tiny bit quicker because if you're uh, carrying something over your head, it's, you walk slower and you can't roll. So yeah, it just saves a tiny bit, little bit of time there. Minor optimization. Uh, but yeah, it is just a one frame thing. And so it's, you don't always get it. <laughs> but anyways, with all of that, we finally get some butter on our sword so we can butter the largest piece of bread that we can find. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is the butter sword, or the, uh, it, it's technically the light master, light filled the master sword, <laughs> something along those lines, but it looks like butter, so yeah, that's what we all call it. <laughs> but anyways, so now that I have that, that marks the end of the first half of the dungeon, and that marks the end of the episode. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click the like button. If you didn't, fine, click the dislike button. Follow me on the links in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!